It is the 60th episode of Better News Daily today. Our church is reopening with limited capacity this weekend for the first time in four months. And I did not think when I started this little project that I would make 60 videos before our Sabbath gatherings would be up and running again. Wow. (laughs) Now, the original plan with this Better News Daily project was to keep making videos until our Sabbath gatherings resumed. But we're so close to having gone through every single book of the Bible that I can't stop now. So there are seven videos left in this series, and we're going to go until we reach that finish line. Okay? Today we are in the book of First Peter, which is this great New Testament epistle full of wonderful, memorable imagery and really quotable passages throughout. I was going to do this video on spiritual gifts and what Peter says about them in chapter 4, but I changed my mind. I think that there is something more important that we could talk about today. So turn, if you would, to Second Chronicles with me. We're going to be back in First Peter, but we need to go to uh, Chronicles first. Um, this is something that I shared with the elders at our church for a worship thought, and I think it would be useful to share with the entire church family. So Second Chronicles 7, let me set the scene really quickly for you. Uh, Solomon is dedicating the newly built temple. It's this amazing, elaborate building, and all of the people have gathered together because they're excited and they want to celebrate this brand new sacred space. And in chapter 6, Solomon prays this really beautiful dedication prayer, and then this happens at the start of chapter 7. When Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled it. When all the Israelites saw the fire coming down and the glory of the Lord above the temple, they knelt on the pavement with their faces to the ground and they worshiped and gave thanks to the Lord saying, He is good. His love endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you would like to be there to witness that event. I know I would. Wow, fire comes down from heaven. It's this awesome moment of divine approval. This sounds amazing. You would be well aware that God was blessing this space and that he was coming to dwell there. Now let me ask you a second question. Would you take a sledgehammer to the walls of this temple? Would you walk up to one of the golden walls and start smashing away at it? No, of course not. Fire came down from heaven. God is dwelling in this space. You wouldn't dare. Hold that thought. Let's go to the New Testament. So this is the words of Paul in Ephesians. Consequently, You are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Or here's the verse in 1 Peter that inspired this whole train of thought. Peter says, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. Or another way you could translate that is into a temple of the spirit to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. I would give anything to stand outside Solomon's temple and watch God's glory descend. But the Bible says I get an experience that's even better. I'm literally part of the temple itself. You and I And the members of our church and Christians around the world are the living stones that make up the dwelling place for God today. 
Wow. So again, would you take a sledgehammer to Solomon's temple? Well, no, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. But Christians so easily will take a sledgehammer to each other, won't they? Through gossip, lying, criticism, whatever, we take a sledgehammer to God's present-day temple. This pandemic has brought out a lot of great things in Christians. Their desire to help those in need, to stand up for the vulnerable, to encourage those who are depressed. Lots of awesome stuff. But I can also say that it has brought out the worst in Christians, too. Speaking as someone whose social media feeds are predominantly filled with Christians, I find myself shocked and discouraged at the ways that we will speak about and villainize each other. Let me share one more verse with you. Paul really adds some weight to this issue. This is in Corinthians. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. Destroying God's temple, Paul says, heaven forbid, literally, Heaven forbid. He doesn't mince words here. He says God takes this incredibly seriously. Yet I see more and more a casual willingness that Christians have towards tearing each other down. Peter says, Paul says, that we should live with the perception that our brothers and sisters in Christ are sacred space. They bear God's image and the Holy Spirit can dwell in their lives. They are living stones in God's temple. So there's an implicit challenge here for each of us to think twice about the things that we say and do that could potentially be destructive towards one another, right? That's that's the first and obvious takeaway. But I want to challenge you one step further. If you're a human and I assume you are, chances are high that you've heard another Christian before. Whether it was intentional or unintentional, we've all done our fair share of destroying God's temple. So here's what I want you to think about. How can you do some repair work? So so the first part here would be to pinpoint where it is that you've caused destruction. We need to take accountability for the words that we've said, the actions that we've done, the thoughts that we've let fester in our minds. Where have you done damage? And once you've thought of that, what does it look like to repair that damage? Is there a conversation that you need to have, a comment that you need to apologize for on social media? a letter that you need to write, an affirmation that you need to give, some gossip that you need to put a stop to. It obviously varies based on your situation, but what does repair work look like for you? I think Christian love isn't just about making a decision to be more loving going forward. I think it's also about doing the tough work of repairing the damage that we've caused in the past. We are all God's temple, so let's build each other up. That's my thought for you today. Next week, we'll be in a different book of the Bible. We do have our live and in-person church service happening this weekend. All of the details about reopening and the precautions that we ask you to take and that we're going to take are on our website, ksda.org, if you're interested in coming. But the live stream will still be here on this channel if you're not able to make it. And we would love to have you join us that way as well. That's 11 a.m. this Sabbath. Next Monday, we'll be back for Better News Daily in the book of First. Timothy. I think, no, no, there's, there's two more epistles left, but boy, we're getting close to the end. All right. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful weekend.